I'm here today to talk to you about an advertising campaign that I'm running called Go Vegan World. Go Vegan World is indebted to the residents of Eden, the sanctuary that I run in Ireland. Uh, since I opened the sanctuary in 2008, I've been privileged to witness the character and personality, as well as the complexity, sophistication and courage of the individuals who've lived there. They arrive as traumatised victims of human use, often in their early childhoods, some of them newly born, like Cormac in this photograph. Despite their terrible histories, they have the courage to trust and heal and thrive. I used to think when they arrived at Eden that I had rescued them. They have rescued me from my ignorance. I witness them treasuring every day of their lives and I'm heartbroken on their behalf that we take those lives from them. I have seen the light go out of too many eyes. Every one of them struggles to hold on to their precious only life right until their last breath. I'm appalled by the harm we inflict on them by our use of them, by the very fact that we ever domesticated them or thought ourselves better, better than them. And I'm horrified of, about the hidden nature of this, something that I never realised until I started the sanctuary myself. It's something everyone needs to know about, and Go Vegan World's goal is to tell them. The campaign is very large, it's highly structured and detailed. It's the result of many years of getting to know the animals that we use as commodities in a very intimate way at Eden. It's also the result of many years of working in the field of vegan education, and also of using veganism as a tool in my own clinical practice with humans. So in the limited time that we have here today, I'll outline something of its history and origins. I'll describe its mission and tell you something about the strategy, the methods and the design that I've used to convey its message to the public. And then I'll discuss its results and I'll talk about how it's been received by the public and the media. You won't be surprised to hear that it has had many hurdles. So I'll speak a little bit about some of them and of course, I'll show you how this campaign is run for and by the animals themselves through their representatives at Eden. I didn't ever set out to run a sanctuary. Eden was founded quite by accident when I was given two orphaned lambs to care for. I was fortunate because I met the animals face to face and they taught me to be vegan. During the first few years, I didn't know any other vegans. And I didn't know anyone who felt about other animals like I did. But I continually searched for information. And one day, I stumbled across a web page called Thinking Like a Chicken. And I found this woman who really seemed to get chickens. Someone, someone who knew that and recognised that birds need to be kept at the forefront of our animal rights activism. They're so small that they're you, we use them in far greater numbers. Um, the, 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 the chickens and the, and the birds who are used in the egg industry, it's so hidden. The, the damage we inflict on them is so hidden. So I'd like to take this opportunity today to thank her for supporting me and inviting me to speak here today. When Eden didn't have a recognisable voice of its own, Karen Davis let the voices of its residents be heard through her work. And one of those voices was Matilda's. She was the first, one of the first residents to arrive at Eden when she was rescued from a petting farm in January 2009. Matilda very quickly stepped apart from that group of chickens and showed me who she was. She was intelligent, gregarious and capable. In the words of the late, great and lovely Tom Reagan, she was so obviously someone and not something. The night she died, I promised her that I would devote the rest of my life to telling the world about who animals are. I named Eden's Animal Rights and Vegan Education Centre Matilda's Promise in her memory. Go Vegan World is just one of its activities and it's one of my ways of keeping that promise. Her footprint is all over its work, literally and figuratively. Its goal is to move us closer to a vegan world. 
Sanctuary is vital for the residents who are fortunate enough to be rescued, but vegan education is more important because it stops them being bred into this life for human use in the first place. But I find vegan education very challenging, not because it was successful, because it was very successful, but because I was reaching so few people. I used to put so much effort into vegan education programs and internships and the big range of, of programs that I ran at Matilda's Promise, but I knew that I didn't really matter. The real power lay in the hands of the animals themselves to reach the hearts and minds of a large audience. It was during one of those dark and frustrating periods that activists would be so familiar with that I remembered that Karen had run bus ads here in the United States and I was inspired to do the same. In celebration of World Vegan Month, the campaign launched in 2015 in Ireland. It is dedicated to the memory of Matilda. This campaign is about other animals for other animals. For the first time in history, the animals themselves have gone out onto the streets and demanded their rights. Go Vegan World has allowed them to address the world on behalf of the billions we harm every year. Those who are grieving for their stolen babies. Those who are exploited, incarcerated and mutilated. Whose minds and bodies are tortured in laboratories in the name of science. Who are imprisoned, frustrated and tormented. Whose magnificent spirits are so needlessly broken by us. And who are going to their deaths and dying in terror and agony as we speak. The campaign immediately caught the eye of the public and the attention of the media for the same effort that I had been expending trying to educate a few people. I was now reaching them in their millions. It moved to Northern Ireland and then it expanded to the UK in June 2016. Go Vegan World is a unique campaign for several reasons. It's entirely animal focused in nature, in contrast to the many forms of advocacy that are appearing, especially in the last few years, that are focused on humans or on veganism as a diet. It gives a clear, consistent and unequivocal call for veganism, and it seeks complete cessation of animal use for human ends. Although it has come to be recognised in Europe alongside large organisations, Go Vegan World is not large. It's a grassroots organisation. The campaign is created, designed and managed on a voluntary basis by me. It is now the world's largest vegan advertising campaign, but all funding is spent on the campaign itself and not on overheads or salaries. campaign mission is to put veganism on the public agenda. As long as we continue to think of them through the lens of difference, we'll continue to exploit them. We don't even see them for who they are, who they were before they appeared on our kitchen tables. These are not the values that we claim to cherish. These are not the traits we had as children. Sociocultural inheritance of animal use, along with careful deception by the industries that profit from it, combine to enable us to behave in ways that are inconsistent with our deeply held ethical beliefs and values. The aim of Go Vegan World is just to, in a very gentle way, expose this inconsistency between our values and our behaviour so that the public becomes informed conscious and aware. Its aim is not for people to cause less harm. It asks them to stop harming others altogether. It asks them to recognise the sacredness of life to everyone, regardless of species. Rather than focus on the atrocities and breaches in welfare legislation that activists are all too familiar with, it asks that we stop breeding them for our use at all. In doing so, it has left the industry and the consumer alike with nowhere to hide from the moral imperative to be vegan. 
The aim of the campaign is not for vegan to people to go vegan in their own time. <coughs> From the perspective of the animals guiding the campaign, while we wait to go vegan, they're being bred to be killed. Instead, the campaign asks people to go vegan now, and it makes it easy for them to do so. Of course, it's rational. The campaign recognises that for some people, veganism presents difficulties. But it aims to be part of the solution, so that everyone is enabled to go vegan, regardless of demographics, employment, or any other obstacle that they believe prevents them from being vegan. It facilitates the animals to be the spokespersons for their rights. Every time I meet a traumatised resident as they arrive at Eden, every time I witness the richness of non-human life, every time I fall in love with one of them and then hold their dying bodies as they <coughs> struggle to hold on to their only precious life, I am more and more convinced of the need to expand the ethical backbone of the animal rights movement. I'm convinced that we need, to we need more ethical vegans who are animal focused and who go out there and talk about this for the tragedy it is, who educate people about social justice and stop pretending that veganism is difficult or it's just one more humanocentric fad. To do otherwise is to underestimate the capacity of those we speak to. Ordinary, intelligent, but uninformed citizens, just like we were before we went vegan. We make veganism difficult for people when we lack faith in the audience we speak to, when we allow our own lack of confidence and hope in a vegan future affect how we educate others. And we make it difficult when we give people the impression that vegetarianism is part of veganism or part of the transition to veganism, or that gradual elimination or reduction reduction of animal use helps. All these forms of advocacy, while very well intentioned, fail to address the root cause of our violence to other animals, which is that we think we can do what we like to them because they're not one of us. It's called speciesism. I understand that activists want to make veganism appear easy and attractive, but portraying it as a frivolous lifestyle runs the risk of completely obliterating the animals from their own cause. What other people do with the information we give them is between them and their conscience. We can't make people go vegan, but we are responsible for the information that we give them and what we ask of them. When we speak about reduced animal use instead of veganism, real lives are affected. In this photo, you see Emily, Charlotte and George at Eden. They value their lives equally. If we promote ideas such as reduced animal use, someone somewhere, just like them, is harmed and killed. If you had to choose one of them for dinner, who would you choose to kill? If you're an animal rights activist and you promote less animal use instead of the complete abolition of animal use, then you too are faced with this choice. Which of them will you fail to advocate for? This is Claudia. She was rescued from the backyard egg industry. She values her life just as much as Emily, George and Charlotte value their lives. If we promote vegetarianism instead of veganism, some hen somewhere will experience reproductive cancer, broken bones and prolapse so the world can consume her eggs. A hen like Claudia will be slaughtered at 18 months when her lifespan as a wild, free animal in the jungles of Southeast Asia would have been at least 12 years. And this is true. Whether she lives on a factory farm or a free range or an organic farm, there are lessons to be learned in America from the mistakes that we are making in Europe. The same fate awaits Missy and her friends, recently arrived at Eden, victims of our Irish free-range egg industry. We don't have the right to promote this. When we speak about vegetarianism instead of veganism, we're responsible for beings like Missy, who came from a free-range farm that carried a glossy label 
and commanded a high price for her eggs. The reason Go Vegan World focuses on the egg and dairy industries is so that the public can meet their victims, the victims of vegetarianism. The campaign calls for veganism and it's quite different from vegetarianism. Veganism avoids harming all sentient life. It concerns the egg and dairy industries as much, if not more, than the meat industries. Go Vegan World covers all forms of animal use and it has avoided singling out one form of animal use over animal use in general so that the most important part sings to the public that they are sentient beings, they are individuals whose lives are important <coughs> to them. They're not our property and we're not entitled to use them. A variety of materials have been used in the campaign to attract public attention and the residents of Eden fe feature in many of the ads so that they're no longer anonymous, faceless animals, but they're real individuals. And if you look very closely at the ads, you'll see that their names are on some of them. And when I'm on the radio, I'm able to speak about them intimately with the, the, the knowledge that I see at Eden about what happens to them when they're used for food. So this is what has made this campaign very rich. It, not, not me, not the fact that I run it, the fact that they run it. They inspire and inform every step of it. So there's a lot of work behind the scenes, behind the ads, and they, it supports the ads. The ads themselves include billboards that are placed in shopping centres um, in, in places, say, like the parking lots of, of grocery stores or on motorways. The one in this photograph is one of the biggest, it's actually the biggest billboard in Europe, targeting daily commuters. And it reaches a very large number of people, but it also has the advantage of uh, tr heavy traffic. So there are traffic t uh, jams and dwell time. So there's the repetition of the people that pass these billboards over and back every day. And then when they get stuck in traffic, there's the dwell time to let them think about them. The campaign advertises in railway stations and bus stops. I've found taxis a very useful form of advertising because they cover the city centres as well as the suburbs. They have ads on the interiors that face the passengers on their journeys. <laughs> and then the taxi drivers have been really nice and they've handed out the vegan guides and the literature that I have here today. Uh, buses are, are wonderful because um, they help us to advertise uh, uh, in areas that we couldn't reach with uh, more expensive ads. They're, they're also very useful because they travel to lower socioeconomic suburbs where people are already primed, I think, to recognise uh, social injustice and take action to remedy it. Advertising formats were chosen on the basis of being large, attractive, at eye level and unmissable. Advertising is a little bit different in Europe to what it is in America. You, you get that sense from the pictures here uh, and from the videos. So they represent really good value for money. The ads are also chosen on the basis of location. So an ad in a rural area might serve the purpose of starting a debate about veganism, maybe in the media or on, on a radio show, whereas ads in densely populated urban areas are seen by more people. The ads were placed in areas of high traffic, keeping in mind that the greatest number of people who go vegan, we're told anyway, are informed city dwellers aged between 15 and 34 who are motivated by ethics. But because I have personal doubts about this and about the definition of veganism that's used in the research that gave us this statist these statistics, I didn't confine the campaign to these areas because I believe that veganism concerns every man, woman and child on the street. And I think as a movement, we might underestimate who might go vegan when they're given the opportunity to meet the animals as people have been in this campaign. Most of the ads contain very little text so that the message can reach people in a few seconds, but some forms of advertising lend themselves to elaborating on the detail. These include advertorials and newspaper articles that I've used um, in United Nations publications on climate change and food security to highlight the intersectional benefits of veganism, but to do so within an animal rights context. Some of the, I have some of these ads here today um, that you can have a look at if you want to, or they're on my website as well. 
I've also run advertorials that target both the change makers, like the politicians in society, and the general population by offering a simple but comprehensive introduction to the reasons for and the benefits for, for veganism. So the one you see here is in a magazine that's really targeted at people who are interested in politics, including politicians. I've also used full-page newspaper adverts that describe how I went vegan when I witnessed the separation of mothers and babies in the dairy industry. And these ads have reached a very wide audience and they've proved very successful. And I've advertised at popular events like football and <laughs> rugby matches, um, where, we, where you're assured a very lar large audience. You can't fit an awful lot on these ads, but what they do is they normalize veganism and they register with some people. They register with the industry. The ads themselves are really just the tip of the iceberg of Go Vegan World. The campaign is supported by a vegan guide which is free to download or receive in hard copy. It's also freely available to activists, so if anybody would like to use it in their own advocacy, please let me know and I'll, I'll make sure that you have a supply. Um, email me if you want to use it and, and come and have a look at the copies that I have here today. <coughs> and the campaign is supported by a comprehensive website. I design the ads myself and I source all the design materials and then I use technical help to uh, bring them to fruition. I'm not a designer, but the reason I work in this way is to ensure that the ads are very accurately and precisely, that they very accurately and precisely convey the messages from the animals, mostly the animals at Eden, to the public. The ads are legally protected, so while they can be shared on social, social media, they can't be altered or used by any other organisation. I represent and manage the campaign by myself at all times. And the reason I do this is so that it remains integral, so that the message is not diluted, and so that the animals at Eden who are guiding it continue to be able to do so. The ads are designed to be colourful and attractive, so that people's eyes are drawn towards them. But then they're accompanied by headlines that confront us with the injustice of our use of them. The campaign design also uses repetition. So, uh, for instance, um, the repetition we know is one of the most successful aspects of advertising. So the ads are placed in city areas where people might see them on their way to work or, 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 or to catch a train. And then the same ads are on the railway platforms when they get there, and then they're repeated inside the trains or the buses. Uh, so that then that same group of commuters are targeted on their mobile phones. So they, they see the ads again when they're on social media. So in this way, veganism is becoming normalized and the chances that the message will be absorbed are really greatly enhanced. I also... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I couldn't have done this in my 20s, but I'm no longer embarrassed, not when I've, with what I've seen in the animals at Eden. They're not the most attractive <laughs> forms of advertising, but they are very successful. There's a very high dwell time in bathrooms. <laughs> so I got them, I really hit home on the two messages that, 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 I, that I wanted here. The, um, the humane myth, the idea that eggs, dairy, or animal flesh can never be regarded as humane, and the myth that animal foods are necessary. So I was able to cover all the animals that we use for food, including fishes and honeybees, and these ads contain the statements from the UK National Health Service and the American Academy of Nutrition and Diet, uh, Dietetics Association, the position statements on plant diets. They're very short, they're just shortened versions. The journal references are quoted there, so anybody that knows anything about science knows that this is a valid statement, and, and, the, and the website is there as well. They can go off afterwards and research it for themselves. It's uh, been very successful. I never advertised anything in my, in my life before. I think I must have picked the wrong career because this campaign won an award, which was wonderful because that, that in itself attracted more publicity. Many of the ads are placed outside restaurants and supermarkets to contrast the view of animals as ingredients with the truth of, of who they are. 
Uh, this, is, this was the first ad to appear right outside McDonald's, and we've had many ads like this throughout the campaign. It's a mark of the campaign effectiveness that Go Vegan World, fighting for animal rights through veganism, was discussed alongside Sony, Facebook, and the Financial Times by Marketing Week, where it was described as flipping the traditional presentation of animals on its head through a high-impact campaign. The ads are designed around several core themes. I won't have time to go through them all today, but I'll outline them by way of illustration. Um, they illustrate that the animals we use are conscious of what happens to them. In fact, it is us who are unconscious or merely subconsciously aware of what we're doing to them. And in all the ways that matter, they're like us. When I trained as a psychologist 20 years ago, I studied the effects of betrayal trauma in humans who were harmed by the very people on whom they depended for their survival. This kind of trauma gives rise to a whole different complex of symptoms to something like an accidental trauma, like a car crash. I can no longer see the difference between the, the humans who suffer at the hands of their carers and the animals we have domesticated into dependency on us, whose trust we gain and then betray without scruple. Every time a resident arrives at Eden, I think about how easily they could have been transported to a slaughterhouse <coughs> instead of to us. The residents of Eden continually remind me of the depths of our betrayal. The animals are also represented as individuals whose lives matter to them, who experience feelings and who are harmed at an individual level by our use of them. So that's also reflected in the, in the language that I've used in the ads, where I, I don't describe what happens to the species in general. I describe what, what happens her or him in those ads. We're so used to dealing, dealing with a sea of animals that we relate to by group or by species. It wasn't until I got to know them as individuals that I could see that they mattered. And this first came home to me with Matilda. You know, I remember the first time uh, I called her name and she ran towards me and I thought, you know, I used to think that you were a piece of flesh or eggs uh, and now I see you as a person, somebody that I relate to, a relationship that's complex and dynamic and somebody, you know, that I'm still crying over all these years later. So that's what I tried to convey in the ads, the individuality, because that makes it easier for people to see who they are. The campaign also addresses the theme of the sacredness of life. I've been running Eden since the first spring lambs came to us in 2008, and I still can't get my head around the fact that the sheep who've lived here since that time would no longer exist if Eden didn't exist that the turkeys who run to me for a hug would have lost their lives for a quickly forgotten Christmas dinner, that this baby with his complex need for love would have had his life ended for someone's dinner, this baby who craved that we cuddle him and yet when we cuddled him he trembled in our arms because somebody had pulled all his teeth out. I can't get my head around the fact that I used to eat someone like him. So I tried to convey this in the ads, how precious life is to the person living that life and how violently and needlessly we take their lives from them. And finally, the ads are designed to show who the animals were before we turned them into objects or ingredients by juxtaposing these two images together. Uh, some of the hurdles that I have faced is trying to get designers with the technical know-how to put my ads together who refuse to put these two images together, who refuse to put the logo on the ads. Um, I, I, I think that's the, st the strength of it, is, is, is the fact that the real individuals are, are juxtaposed with what we do to them. And I think one of the most important aspects of the campaign is the lecture tour. And, and, and the reason I'm here today lecturing to you about Go Vegan World um, is because of Karen's invitation. It it's a very rich opportunity to describe 
the individuals who are running the campaign and their histories and, and how they're doing it. Um, the campaign is also one of the few and sometimes the only vegan education stall in attendance at vegan festivals. And they're wonderful opportunities. Ronnie, who's here with me, uses the virtual reality equipment. And uh, we target an audience of people who, who might be interested in veganism but just haven't quite got there yet. Increasingly, I attend non-vegan festivals and I speak at scientific conferences, although when I first uh, spoke at a psychology conference, uh, uh, um, you know, and I had very high hopes because it was the British Eco Psychology Conference, nobody turned up. <laughs> nobody. So I don't know whether that says something about me or my profession or that aspect of my profession. So the results, it's very difficult to quantify the results of a campaign like this. The most important aspect of it is the fact that the truth is exposed in such a public and wide-reaching manner and that people are prompted to think about the animals we use. Some people write to tell me that they've gone vegan, like this person who who's says she's finding it cheap and, and easy. And it's particularly heartening to hear from people who saw the campaign and went vegan a year or a year and a half ago and have gone on to work in vegan businesses or become activists themselves. Um, that's also true of the previous programs I ran, the internship programs. I know that somebody, Roxy, I think, is here today. Um, Roxy went on to do wonderful activism herself after spending time at Eden. But this kind of qualitative information um, about the campaign makes it very rich. But we also need quantitative statistics to justify the amount of money that it costs. When someone donates substantial funding to your organisation, you have an enormous responsibility to spend it very wisely, because that money is the animal's money. For those of us like me, who've worked at the coalface of animal rights and rescue, and, we, and we've run our sanctuaries for years on a shoestring, spending large amounts of money can really feel very uncomfortable, um, nerve wracking absolutely nerve-wracking. And we need evidence to justify, the, um, to justify the expense. So I built some measures into the design that we could, um, that would give us some quantitative results. They include the website, the number of vegan guides downloaded, and the interest generated on social media. So on average, we get about 5,500 visits to the website per week, and about 500 vegan guides are, are downloaded. But when the campaign is fully operational, for example, when we were in, um, for two weeks, when we were in the, the West Midlands area of the UK, there were 25,000 website visits. And most of the 20,000 people who visited uh, the site were new users. When the campaign is live on the streets, the increase in traffic to the website is in the region of 500 to 1,000%. So even though I kind of cringe sometimes at the expense, of, you know, I look at, at one of those ads would have run my sanctuary for two years. Um, but when you see figures like this, you, you do feel heartened. So this tells us that the campaign is doing what we set out to do. It's attracting public interest, and that interest is coming back to a source, Go Vegan World, that does not compromise the animals. I'm using social media to target uh, very specific demographics, including people whose uh, interests are on the fringes of veganism, so uh, non-vegans interested in animal welfare, the environment and other social ju justice issues, and vegetarianism. Uh, all the campaign resources really go into attracting non-vegans. Social media can be one of the most disheartening and damaging places for an activist to be, but it's also a very powerful tool, and we can use it to educate others. Statistics from social media show that there's a growing interest in the campaign. And when I removed some of the data capture aspects of the campaign, so for instance, if people wanted to download the vegan guide, which, which I encourage people to do because it's cheaper and more environmentally friendly than the hard copy, even though the hard copy is very attractive. Um, but I. I, wanted to, I didn't want a big flood of interest in the campaign from people who were already vegan interfering with the statistics. Um, so I asked people for their email address so that we could follow them up and offer them some support and also so we could distinguish between where the interest in the campaign was coming from. But it, it, a huge number of people were landing on the download page but they weren't actually downloading the guide. So when we removed those questions we had a huge amount of interest and there were 24,000 uh, vegan guides downloaded in, in January. 
For the most part, the public has received the campaign very well. Many people stopped to watch the ads, and I particularly saw pe uh, children drawing their parents' attention to, to, to the ads. And children have a natural affinity with animals. And on a few occasions, people broke down when they read them. The words that rang in my ears throughout the campaign are, I never knew. People have a right to be informed, and they're far more willing to listen than many of us in this movement give them credit for. I also join with local volunteers in street activism, so we give out vegan, free vegan food and we offer the people the opportunity to use the virtual reality equipment and hand out our, our guides and talk to people. And anybody who does this kind of street activism, I, you know, I, I think it's wonderful, it's really powerful. Following the January campaign, the Bristol Post ran a poll asking if the public found the ads offensive. Over 2,000 people voted, and 93% of people said the ads were not offensive, which is good. You know, you'd be very tempted to show people the truth of what happened. But, you know, when you do that, when you do that on social media, they just remove you, you know, so you're not reaching anybody. I also think, you know, we don't always show the victims of human abuse in their abusive situations, so we show the animals some dignity by showing their, their sentience. I think it's enough. The Birmingham Mail also ran a poll towards the end of the very large campaign that we ran in the West Midlands. 63% of people said that the campaign had encouraged them to go vegan, and 10% um, said that it would make them consider veganism. Now, these figures would not stand up to scientific scrutiny, but I, I do hope that they give some indication of the general positive direction that the campaign is making in society. We're very primed to focus on the negative in life, and in the animal rights movement, um, we give a lot of attention to negative reactions to veganism. But Go Vegan World has taught me that we need to remain open and positive and hopeful of a vegan future. I've been very pleasantly surprised by the number of people who've indicated their willingness to at least examine the issue. And this actually is backed up by research. Eurobarometer surveys show that most people are concerned about other animals. Most of them want to know about how other animals are affected by our use of them. They welcome campaigns that inform them about animal use. And the majority of people are even willing to pay more if they think that other animals will be protected. Research conducted in 2011 in the UK on attitudes and behaviours around sustainable food purchasing found that 63% were willing to cut down on red meat and 45% on dairy. Those figures have increased even, even since then. Doctors who prescribed a plant-based diet for the prevention and treatment of diabetes also reported that it was, it was remarkably well accepted by patients. So even though many of us within our own movement despair that veganism will ever be mainstream, the, the research doesn't support that. I think it's time that we stop talking about veganism as being something exclusive or difficult. People are willing and people are able. The problem is they're not being asked to consider animal rights. They're being asked to think about animal welfare and better treatment. They're being asked to eat less animal foods instead of being asked to simply stop using other animals at all. They're being sold the myth of humane animal products instead of being educated about veganism. If we claim to represent other animals, then we don't have the right to ask for anything less than veganism. Go Vegan World has demonstrated on a very, very large scale, the biggest scale of any advertising campaign that's ever been conducted in the world. And it has demonstrated that when we shift the focus onto animal rights, we get a positive response. As it did in Ireland, the campaign in the UK is attracting a lot of media interest, although it's been slower, certainly, to get that attention. At the moment, I do two or three radio interviews every, every week on BBC, usually BBC Radio. There's also been coverage of the campaign in print and online newspapers, magazines and websites. And I also run a consistent <coughs> online campaign targeting non-vegans in countries all over the world, well, English-speaking countries all over the world. The campaign has particularly attracted the wrath of the dairy industry. This ad 
is the one that gets pe that people have written to me time and time again. It's the ad that really gets to people. It gets to fathers or uh, fathers who, who, who are expecting children. It gets to mothers. It gets to women who are pregnant. This is the ad that in one fell swoop destroys the species barrier and shows us that that primal need to protect someone you love is not confined to humans. That same fierce, brave bond that mothers have for their babies is not less because they're not human. And it's a bond that's destroyed by all animal agriculture, especially the dairy industry. When I ran the campaign in Ireland, the industry fought back through print and radio interviews. All the radio interviews are, are on my website if you want to listen to them. They make very entertaining reading. Um, when the campaign launched in the UK in June 2016, they attempted to get the ads taken down. Not surprisingly, because these ads are influencing people and they're going vegan on foot of them. In recent weeks, the National Fa Farmers Union in the UK have become vocal in their opposition to the campaign. Go Vegan World has responded and the ongoing publication, the ongoing public conversation has been picked up by several newspapers. And this has given us an unprecedented an unprecedented opportunity to engage in public conversation. We've been able to assert that attempting to defend animals, animal use by way of reference to how, to how the animals are treated completely misses the point that veganism is about justice and that justice can't be accorded to other animals unless we're willing to swap places with them. It's also given us the opportunity to demonstrate that veganism is not against farming. In fact, it's very much on the side of farmers and we need to help farmers transition to plant-based agriculture. The National Farmers Union has now called on the dairy industry to treat the Go Vegan World campaign as a wake-up call. This is the first time that the, his that the industry has reacted in this way to a vegan education campaign and it has reacted in this way because of the uncompromising nature of Go Vegan World to call attention to the injustice we perpetrate on other animals, not by our treatment of them, but because we use them. It's a sign of how effective a campaign can be if it keeps its eye on the goal of animal rights. Go Vegan World avoids graphic imagery and undercover footage of the horrific abuse of animals, not because it doesn't happen, we all know it does, but because 99.9% .9 of people are already against it, including farmers. Instead, it focuses on legal standard practice, including the atrocities that products like organic milk and eggs are predicated on and the injustice of regarding them as less than us. We need to address the species' this notion that other animals are not ours to use. This is the issue that Go Vegan World has been able to address in front of an audience of millions. They have nowhere to hide. The only rational response is to go vegan. And the value of a clear and consistent call to ethical veganism should never be underestimated. Ethical motivation is what pe makes people who go vegan stay vegan. When we take into account that a living, feeling being like Pixie in this photo is used and exploited, harmed and killed if we consume so much as one gram of her flesh or their eggs or their dairy, that's veganism because that's the only way in which we recognise that to that feeling being, life is as important as it is to us. A vegan world is only the beginning. Our goal should be their complete liberation from us. And for the animals on whose behalf we advocate, that goal can't come fast enough. I'd like to leave you with some scenes from the campaign so that you get an, an idea of what it was like on, on the streets. I wanna see the world united and learn to live as one. I wanna see the world united and learn to live as one. I wanna see the world united, learn to live as one. I wanna see the world united, learn to live as one. 
Now 